scratching on the surface You'll never find a pearl if you wait out on the shore That's the way it is when you're looking for the answers Wisdom lies deep, wisdom lies in the search Hello and welcome to Probe. We have a delightful treat for you this week. This episode is called Tell Us Your Story. I'm sure you are curious to know how Dr. Rajkumar came to believe in Jesus. What did he believe before he met Jesus? Why did he change his belief system? I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear the story. Over to Dr. Rajkumar and Dr. Nirmala Abraham. Brother Rajkumar, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Sets of Probe. Thank you, Thank you for coming. And uh, today we are all very excited because we have decided that we want to hear your story. And this episode is called Tell Us Your Story okay. because uh, you have been sharing a little bit about yourself and your life and your family in the previous episodes and many people are curious to know about how you met Christ and what transformation he can just start off. Uh, transformation is a continuous process. I am still being transformed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh, in terms of uh, knowing the Lord, uh, that happened uh, 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 34 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now let me uh, start from the very beginning. Yes. Uh, actually, I became conscious of God when I was 11 years old. Uh -huh. Like I come from a Hindu family and we were actually uh, uh, Tabalian Brahmins and among the Brahmins there are Ayas and Ayangas. Mm -hmm. Ayas worship uh, Shiva yes. and Ayangas worship Vishnu. Okay. We are Shaivas, they are Vaishnavites. Okay, you know? that's the difference. That's the difference. But it uh, doesn't really matter but this is the, you know, the perspective they have of each other. Oh, okay. And uh, of course my family deity was, I was told, is Subramani Swami. Mm -hmm. And uh, so from age of 11 I, I became conscious of God. I used to do my pujas in that prayer room in the house, go to temples with my mother. I was like a normal child, you know. I had uh, very good health. In fact, I had everything in life. Yes. I was the youngest of five children. Mm. So being the youngest, I was pampered by everybody. Mm -hmm. So I never lacked anything in life. Okay. And uh, I had good health. I was very good in studies. Mm -hmm. I thought so. My mother didn't <laughs> think so. <laughs> uh, and very good in sports, mm. uh, cricket, athletics and all that. Okay. So because I was, uh, you know, regularly going to temple and praying and all that, I thought, since I've been uh, doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing, God has been good to me. Mm. Yet uh, I felt a lacking in my heart okay. as a young boy itself mm -hmm. about the knowledge of God. Okay. Uh, I knew about God. I wanted to know Him. Mm. Knowing about Him is different from knowing yes. Him. Yes. And I remember we were, we grew up in Chennai, and we had a house in uh, Nungumbakam, Swaling mm -hmm. Road. Mm. And I used to go t at the terrace of my house. Okay. Night time, I look at, I don't flat on the terrace and look at the stars. Mm. And uh, imagine uh, who made the stars. Yes. What is beyond the stars? Mm. Where does the universe end? Where is God? Okay. <laughs> so then uh, it is like a, a search, you know, of uh, my heart. Right. Uh, everything went well in my life. I went through school and college very easily. Mm. I got into engineering college very easily. I got my branch electronics and telecommunication mm. with a minimum okay. effort. Yes. And without much studies, I used to do well in the exams. Yes. And even engineering, I hardly used to attend class. <laughs> <laughs> People shouldn't follow me in this. <laughs> and but somehow I went through everything very well, and I got good results, and and uh, I got a very job very easily. So you thought because you were doing all the right things, everything yeah, yeah. was going right with oh, you. Going right with me. Mm. So I got a job in a company called Siemens okay. in Bangalore, and then uh, we were four young engineers, and uh, one of them was a Christian. Mm. Uh, from a Catholic background, okay. inc incidentally. Okay. And uh, he was a very good believer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we respected him for his uh, faith and mm -hmm. also for his nature. Mm -hmm. very, very loving, kind, compassionate mm -hmm. and uh, very uh, righteous. Mm -hmm. Looking from a non-Christian perspective, okay. we look at people, righteous people, unrighteous people yes. and all that. And also very good in his work. Mm -hmm. 
So we all liked him very much. After about two, three years of working, one day he walked up to me in the office and very casually told me, Raj, for the last two years I want to tell you something. Mm. Now I'm going to tell you. Yes. I hesitated so long, but now I'm going to tell you. Mm. This was in Bangalore, in right? In Bangalore. Okay. God loves you. Mm. Jesus loves you. Mm. There's only one way to God, that is Jesus. And you must believe in Jesus to go to heaven. Mm. Now, either why should I believe in Jesus to go to heaven? Mm. I'm a good guy. I'm, you know, I'm a good person. Yes. I'm not a big sinner. You know, mm. I mean, okay, I'm imperfect. I do things wrong, but so does everybody. Mm. And I'm better than most people I mm. know about. I'm fine myself. Mm. But he said, no, you must believe in Jesus. Otherwise, you will not go to heaven. Mm. He's the way. Mm. And I thought uh, this guy is uh, a very nice guy. But in this area, he's wrong. Mm. So I thought I should set him right. Yes. And I thought uh, I won't argue with him. Mm. I won't fight with him. Mm. Because I thought things of God, things of faith mm. are not fought about. Right. They're very personal. Mm. So yet I want to show him that I'm, you know, my way is also okay. Mm. I can find my own way of going to heaven. Yes. And I, I won't uh, argue with him. I will convince him. Mm. And I thought about a strategy. Mm. At that time, I believe all religions are same, all gods are same, mm. and uh, which automatically or logically means if all religions are same, all holy books must be the same. Yes. So if I show from my own scriptures there are many ways of going to heaven, mm. he will not believe, he is a Christian. Yes. So I will read his holy book. Uh. And from his holy book, the Bible, I will prove to him that there are many ways of going to heaven. Yes. Now, uh, that was a brilliant strategy. Yeah, I thought that's a logical strategy. Yes. You know, because he's a Christian, he will believe <laughs> right. the Bible. Right. And uh, of course, when I told him that I can't accept his statement, mm. he says, if you don't believe me, you ask the living God. Okay. He will reveal himself to you. Mm. He will tell you what I'm saying is true. Mm. That uh, was working on my mind, you know. Mm. I had no problem with the living God. Because mm. I believe in a living God. Yes. So I thought, uh, okay, I'll do this thing. I read the Bible and prove to him. Mm. So I bought a Bible for myself. Mm. In, in this, Bangalore itself. In Bangalore itself. And I say, I'm going to read the Bible. I'll get arguments to prove my point. All gods are same. Mm. At the same time, I thought, if there was a one percent chance mm. that what he said was true, mm. then I want to know it. Ah. So I stopped all my prayers to various gods and goddesses. Mm. My only prayer was to the living God. Okay. Very short prayer. Mm. Living God is Christ the only way to you. Mm. If it is so, let me know. If it's not so, also let me know. Okay. Then I opened the Bible, mm. didn't know where to start. Mm. I had never read the Bible in my life before. Mm. I thought, okay, I'll read the New Testament part. Mm. I didn't know which, where to start. Uh -huh. So, New Testament, the latter part of the Bible. Yes. Open that part. Mm. First page before me happened to be Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. Okay. <laughs> so, it is God's plan. And I read the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Mm. And I thought a very interesting book, mm. very philosophical. Mm. Word was with God, word was God. How can both be true? <laughs> it made me think. Yes. Then I kept on reading, 14th verse, mm. even more mysterious. Yes. And the word became flesh. Mm. So how can the word become flesh? Mm. I thought this book is a very fascinating book, very mm. mysterious, very philosophical, mm. mystical book. Mm. And I got engrossed in the Bible. Mm. And as I read about Jesus, the first time I read the name Jesus in the Bible, there was a peace in my heart. Mm. I used to wait for the text to come to the name of Jesus mm. and repeat two three times, you know, mm. Jesus, Jesus. And there was something beautiful. Mm. And then I read about what he did, what he taught, the way he responded to women caught in adultery, mm. so much of love and compassion. And I was amazed by his life, mm. his holiness, his love, compassion, humility, power, everything. Mm. Just perfect, you know. I enjoyed the Bible mm. till I came to the 14th chapter of John. Okay. I got stuck in verse 6. Mm. There he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through mm. me. These are his words. Yes. If a Christian tells me that, I may not believe. Mm. But Jesus says. And even as a staunch Hindu, I believe in Jesus mm. as one among many gods. Yes. But here he says he is the way. Mm. The way. The way. So I close the Bible. Simply because I could not come to terms with the statement of Jesus. Mm. And then I closed the Bible. For a month and a half, I didn't read the Bible. Mm -hmm. I realized, as long as I read the Bible, the day went very well for me. Oh, the see. work went well. Everything went well. That's interesting. And then something, uh, you know, peaceful about the whole day. Just mm. reading the Bible. Mm. Ever since I stopped, 
that was missing. Mm. Then I thought to myself, okay, because of John 14, 6, I have stopped. Mm. Let me continue with John 14, 7. Okay. <laughs> so I opened the Bible and tried not to look at John 14, 6. Read John 14, 7. Okay. There Jesus says, if you really knew me, mm. you will know my father as well. Mm. From now onwards, you know him and have seen him. Mm. And the Bible began to speak to me. Yes. Then I thought, uh, this living God is speaking. So let me put questions to him. Mm. So I would uh, have a question and tell him, living God, you are a God of infinite wisdom. Mm. My wisdom is very small. Yes. I cannot understand everything that you know. Mm. But I am going to put my question. Mm. If you feel I can understand your answer, mm. give me the answer. Okay. If you feel I am incapable of understanding the answer, then don't give me the answer. Okay. So I would put a question. I would not be sure they will answer or not. Mm. I told this, I made an mm. unwritten contract with him. <laughs> <laughs> so I would put a question and purposely forget the question. Ah. Because I thought, in case God doesn't answer my question, why remember it? Yes. <laughs> you know, no point. Mm. So I'll keep on putting questions, keep on forgetting the questions. Mm. And uh, what used to happen was, I would have forgotten my question, mm. but God remembered my question. Mm. As I would read the Bible, he would first give me the answer from the Bible and after giving me the answer, he would remind me of my question. Wow. This is almost like Jesus is the answer, but what's the question? Yeah, what is the question? I have some questions and I have to put the question to living God. Right. He answer, will give me an answer. Yes. Uh, for example, I will tell you one question I had was, uh, from childhood I was taught that uh, uh, there is something called reincarnation. Yes. You are born again, again, again. Right. So I told God, living God, I have been told, you know, uh, I'll be born again, again, and uh, so what is the, what's the real, you know, what's the, what is your mm. view on this? Yes. And I forgot the question. Mm. Bringing the Bible, one day in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27, mm. it says, Just as destined for all people to die once mm. and then face judgment, mm. Christ died once for mankind. Yes. He will come again not to bear sin, to bring mm. salvation for those waiting for him. So there is only Came one life. He died for sins of many people. Mm. So one life, one death, one judgment. Mm. Later on I came to understand, Jesus is the judge also. Yes. So that one statement, one life, one death, gave me the answer. Mm. No second death. Then he reminded you of the question you had asked. Yeah, yeah. Because I asked a question about reincarnation. So that thing about die once and face judgment, that means you are not born a second time or third mm. time. Mm. Then you die a second time, third time. Mm. So that answered my question. Right. So like that, many questions I had and every question was answered. Mm. In one year's time, every question was answered. Now you were uh, actually reading the Bible to understand these things yeah. and not really to convince that other person. No, no. Asked. By the way, uh, when I began to read the Bible, I got so engrossed in the Bible, I forgot why I began the Bible. Yes. <laughs> I forgot to go back <laughs> to my friend. That's beautiful. And I was so engrossed in uh, the search for God that I got all the answers. I didn't need to go to anybody. Yes. So one year was a personal Bible reading. Mm. I closed the door of my house, keep the Bible under my pillow. Mm. At <laughs> night time, take it out and quietly read because nobody should know I'm reading. Yes. And even then I got transferred to Germany mm. and being in a foreign country, you know, outside the comfort zone, mm. I tend to depend more on God. Mm. And, uh, so, did you take your wife with you to Germany? No, no, because she was, we were expecting a child, first child. Oh, so you were alone in Germany? I was Germany. alone there. I had mm. gone to learn the German language for three months. Okay. And uh, so, there, in the, all the, those things God used, those circumstances. Because I was uh, seeking God alone. And uh, very interestingly, I had not given my life to Christ. But in one year, my life was changing without my knowledge. Yes. What happened was, uh, we were, I was in uh, uh, German language uh, training institute. They mm. were all uh, colleagues of mine. Mm. I didn't know them before. Mm. All foreigners, mm. Frenchmen, Sp Spaniards, mm. an Englishman, uh, one Portuguese guy, mm. two Mexicans. Mm. We were all learning German language. And uh, one of them, he walked up to me one day and said, Raj, I'm watching you. He's a Portuguese guy, Alberto Suero. He says, every day your life is changing. Mm. I think it's because the book that you read Wow. No, actually, I kept the book in my desk, you know, in the, my room, next to the bed. And I used to cover it with something. Mm. I, I, I don't even want to bring the Bible. Mm. Some more he noticed it. <laughs> and he correlated my change of life with the Bible. Oh. And I thought I was so ashamed, you know. Here the Lord is changing me. Mm. I'm not even having the guts to say I'm reading the Bible. 
And yet same. people knew that it was yet the people reason. Knew that. Then uh, actually, on uh, this happened sometime in uh, November of 1979. Hmm. And 1980, January, I uh, took up my job uh, after training, German language training. I hmm. took up my assignment in Germany, in hmm. Munich. And it was only on the 25th of May 1980, 9.30 p.m., that I uh, gave my life to Christ. Hmm. 9.30 p.m. I accepted Jesus, 9.35 p.m. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's been a long journey. And uh, when I accepted Christ, uh, two questions bothered me. First one was, uh, Lord, when it's true, you are the only saver of the whole world. Mm. How come no wow. other Christian told me that for 27 yes. years? And I had no answer from God. Mm. But uh, in his silence, he spoke to me. Mm. Uh, by keeping quiet, uh, he made me think. I just put a question to God, no one told me, what am I going to do about it? Mm. I, should, I should share. Yes. Do I know? <laughs> so next day morning I began to share gospel. Mm. I began my ministry the next day after accepting mm. Jesus. Second question was, Lord, when you transform lives, because Alberto Sura told me my life is changing, mm. <laughs> before I gave my life to you. Yes. When you change lives, how come the lives of Christians I saw mm. was no different from my life as a Hindu? Ah. So again, I no, no answer. Mm. Then I found the solution for that. Mm. If I can't find role models, let me become one. Yes. I told God, Lord, okay, I ask you this question. Why Christians are not, uh, no transformation. Mm. Lord, uh, change me. Mm. I can't change myself. Mm. You change me. Mm. And uh, he is still on the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's been a long, joyful journey. And the uh, ministry became uh, very incidental. Mm. I honestly believe ministry is only an extension mm. of a relationship with God. Yes. And I told God, Lord, all these years I didn't know you. Now I want you to make up for the lost time. Yes. I'm going to spend time with you. Mm. I want you to reveal yourself to me more and more. Mm. And since I came to know him through reading the scriptures, mm. I believe that whatever I need to know about God mm. is there in the Bible. Yes. So I said, uh, reveal yourself to me. Mm. I'm going to read the Bible, not to know the Bible, mm. but to know you through the Bible. Yes. So when did you tell that person who challenged you that yeah. you had accepted Christ? Actually, he was with me. Oh. He was actually in Erlangen, in a place called near Nuremberg in Germany. Mm. We were both transferred to Germany. Okay. I was in Munich, he was in Nuremberg. Okay. And on that day, he was with me actually. Oh, yeah. I see. So he was... He must have been overjoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very happy. And we are still in contact. He's now in Switzerland. Now, another question I would like to ask is, when you accepted Christ, in what way did you think that Christ was unique or the Christian faith is different from all other faiths that you knew about? Actually, I would put like this, Christ is the answer to all the questions mm -hmm. that people have in life, mm -hmm. independent of the religion you come from. Mm -hmm. I think in one of the episodes that I spoke about how he is the fulfillment of the ages. Mm -hmm. People are searching for the truth, he is the truth, mm -hmm. searching for Light, he is a light. Right. Searching for uh, immortality, he is mm. immortality. Mm. He's given us immortality. Yes. So he is the answer to my questions. Right. So it's only a culmination of the cry of people's hearts. Mm. For ages they've been searching. Mm. And he's the answer. So it's not Christianity, it's not a religion, mm. but a relationship yes. with God through mm. Jesus. So he is the only one who is the fulfillment of all those things yeah, that yeah, people were yeah. searching for. See, so I realized that uh, Everything about the Lord Jesus Christ mm. is a miracle. Mm. His birth was a miracle right. because he was born of a virgin. Yes. Isaiah 7.14. Yes. His life was a miracle because of him there was no sin. Mm. 1 John 3.5. Mm. His death was a miracle because he gave up his spirit. Mm. Matthew 27 chapter 50 says he dismissed his spirit. Mm. Nobody could take his life from no, him. No, he, and uh, he had the power later on his life and take it up again. Yes. So on the third day, he rose from the dead. Because it says in Acts 2.24, it was impossible for death to hold him. Mm. See, death only has power over sinners. Yes. In 1 Corinthians 15.56, mm. Paul says, The sting of death is sin, mm. and the power of sin is the law. Yes. There's a law, mm. you break the law, mm. and the uh, uh, power of sin is in the law. Mm. And the sting of death is sin. Mm. Death strikes us because we sin. Right. Death shouldn't have struck Jesus. Mm. In him there was no sin. Exactly. But he died for our sins. Mm. And once he finished that, he had to naturally rise from the dead mm. because it was impossible for death to hold him. Mm. 
So there's never been a life like Christ. Yes. Miraculous birth, miraculous life, miraculous death, resurrection. Mm. So there's no comparison with anybody. You know? yes. Because his life was sinless, everything he said we can believe. He says in John 8, 24, he talks to the Jews. Mm. He says, I've told you, you will die in your sins mm. if you do not believe I am the one I claim to be. Mm. You will die in your sins. Yes. So in fact, for me, when I preach, my favorite topic is death. Mm. Victory over death. Mm. Because in Christ, a victory over death. And death is something no one wants to talk about. Yes. It's a taboo subject. And it's something everybody is scared about. Scared about. Mm. Delivers from the destroyer. Yes. The one who destroys right. mankind, mm. the, the one who holds the power of death, the devil. I refer to what Jesus says about himself in that verse, you know. He tells the Jews, mm. I have told you, you will die in your sins. Mm. If you do not believe, I am the one I claim to be. Mm. So I tell people, I am going to tell you who Jesus says he is, not who I think he is, mm. or who he says he is. Yes. And if you don't believe who he says he is, you will die in your sins. Mm. You know? <laughs> so very simple. Yes. This life in this world is very temporary. Mm. And I know that uh, because he lives in me, I invited him to my heart by his grace. He enabled me to do that. And because he lives in me, Christ in me is the hope of glory. Right. After I finish my calling in this world, I'll go home. <laughs> Did your family accept the fact that you accepted Jesus into your life? Uh, family means my, my wife and son, of course. Mm. Also my parents, mm. over a period of time. After four years after my, my change, the Lord uh, brought my father to him, then my mother also. Brother Raj, you said that uh, you started with the book of John, yeah. and it wasn't your doing, it yeah. just happened like that God led you to read that. Yeah. Do you think that's the best way for anybody who is searching for God and who wants to read the Bible? Is that the best book to start with? I can't say that because the entire Bible is God's yes. you know, and uh, He can speak through any verse in the Bible. Mm. But why I recommend the uh, Gospel of John for people who are searching? Simply mm. because the Gospel of John speaks a lot about who Christ is. Yes. The identity of Jesus. Of Jesus. In fact, John wrote the Gospel after all the other three had written. Right. Matthew, Mark and Luke. Mm. And uh, it was written around AD 90, according to Bible scholars. Mm. So he wrote the gospel primarily for people to believe that he is the son of God. Mm. And by believing they have everlasting life. Yes. So the purpose of John writing is, John chapter 20, 30, 31 talks mm. about that. Mm. So because that is the purpose of writing, you read that book, if your heart is open, yes. you will find him. You know? yes. So I recommend John for anybody who is seeking. Of course, God can speak through any, any verse in the Bible mm. because he is sovereign. You can't decide how he will speak. Yes. But since this is written uh, to, for people to believe, mm. so John is a very good book to start off. I know many people who have read the book of John or yeah. attended a Bible study on yeah. the book of John and yeah. came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. Um, did any particular verse uh, really help you to accept Jesus, like John 3.16 or... No, for me it was John 14.6. 14.6, John yeah. 14, 6, the yeah, verse yeah, at yeah. which you stopped first. Yeah, we stopped. Because again, it kept, kept coming back. Yes. In fact, those the 45 days approximately when I stopped reading the Bible, mm. uh, every night when I go to sleep, this thought would come to me. Ah. What do you say to what Jesus said? <laughs> so it is troubling me a lot. Yes. He said that, what do you say? Mm. He is the way. You have to respond. Mm. Ultimately, I had to yield to, <laughs> to what God has spoken. You know. So if you, if you ask me which was uh, uh, changed my life, it was John 4 and 6. Mm. Before we end, would you like to give a word to our viewers? Yeah. Uh, something from your life that you would like to speak to the viewers who are also in a similar position maybe. Yeah. Somebody who is searching for God, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. who is reading the Bible yeah. or would like to read the Bible. As you are, you come to me. Say, Lord, I am imperfect. The mm. fact is, we are going to die. Mm. We die because of sin. Mm. So trying to say I'm not a sinner is uh, futile. Mm. And if anyone says I'm not a sinner, it's like telling God is a liar. Ask God, Lord, uh, I want to be free of my sin. I'm willing to repent. Uh, just believe what the Bible says about Jesus. Mm. Ask him to come in your heart as Savior and Lord. Mm. At that point, you receive salvation. Mm. And thereafter, let him live his life through you. Right. And then thereafter, what I tell people is, love God with all your heart, mm. soul, mind and strength mm. and just be yourself yes don't try too hard to be a christian mm. don't apply pressure upon yourself mm. enjoy your relationship with god mm. and as you do that your life and ministry will flow from your relationship mm. with god it's very important for christians not to make a christian life with a big burden very some experience yes rather joy mm. and uh, obey him because you love him before you 
accepted Christ. Did you ever feel that this statement that Jesus is the only way to God is mm. a very rigid statement that the Christians are making? I didn't look at the Christians are making. Jesus made this. Jesus made this. Yeah, from day one I knew that. Yes. I didn't. Uh, in fact, uh, Christian never told me that, except mm. my friend of office who told right. me. Right. But I found it in the Bible, no? Mm. So once I found it in the Bible, it is no more Christians telling me. Mm. It is Jesus telling me. Mm. Paul was not with Jesus. Paul right. was with me, my ego. <laughs> and I never doubted that Jesus said that. He somehow, from day one, I never doubted the Bible as God's word, mm. even as a Hindu. Yes. Because I thought that this is God's word, you know, this is a holy book. Mm. Uh, sometimes people question what Jesus said, you know, he really said that or mm. people wrote it. Mm. Such a thought never entered my mind. Now I know it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Who uh, made me understand this? If this is true, right. so I, I had never any doubt about Jesus saying that. Mm. My problem was, if this is true, how do I respond? Mm. So it took me about forty-five days to even come back to the Bible. Yes. And then uh, there came a point of time, and I said, nothing really matters now because mm. one day I'm going to face judgment. Yes. And you're the judge. Mm. What people say, what my friends say, what my family says is not important. What matters is my Creator. Mm. I am answerable to Him. Yes. So for me, it was very easy transition. I never questioned God's word. Mm. Thank you very much, Thank Brother Raj. We enjoyed listening Thank to your you. story mm. and it's, uh, it's so encouraging for people to hear that God really cared for you so much that yeah. even when you didn't know Him, even when you were lying on your terrace and looking at the stars, mm. I'm sure God was looking at yes. you and saying, that's <laughs> my boy mm. and I know what He's going to do for me and, I, and He's going to know me personally. Yes, yes. And it must have been such a pleasure for God when you actually took that decision. Yeah. <laughs> you pleased him so much and today yeah. your life pleases him. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so Welcome, much. Master. God Thank bless you. you. When God has his eye on somebody, he draws him to himself. Jesus brings about an unbelievable transformation in the lives of those who come to him. If you have such a story to tell, write to us at writetoprobe at gmail.com. Remember, what God did for Dr. Rajkumar, he will do for any seeker who genuinely seeks after him. Next week, we will discuss more about Dr. Rajkumar's belief system. Till then, be a blessing. Tell us more about your faith. Death is not departure from earth. Dr. Street, but God heals. Don't you think that sometimes you can be intruding into their privacy? Yeah, the cow gave milk, you worship the cow to preserve uh -huh. the milk. The sun gave light, you worship the sun to come back the next day. Dr. Rajkumar's passion is telling people about Jesus. For us, it's arrival in heaven.